Hey guys, welcome back to Streamer Masterclass. Today we're talking about a big one. We're talking about two PC setups, and I'm going to try my best to make this a simple and condensed video as much as possible. So let's just jump into it and answer the first question. Why would someone want a two PC setup? Well, there are lots of reasons, but there are two main ones. The idea is to separate your gaming resources and your streaming resources so they each have dedicated power to both. And a lot of times big creators will do this because they wanna record three different videos at once. Maybe they wanna record every source separately and they're using an entire PC's worth of power for their content. And and if they want to run kind of resource intensive games like maybe Call of Duty, they can kind of eat into each other's resources if you're doing it all on one PC. So separating it, you get one PC dedicated to each. Another reason, maybe a good reason why you might want to do this is because maybe your gaming PC is slightly underpowered. And when you try to run OBS and record or stream at the same time, it struggles, but you got a laptop in the other room that can absolutely stream just fine. You wanna hook that thing up, make a simple stream, and you're ready to go. So there are lots of ways to configure a two PC setup. And today we're gonna to go over the one that I feel is the simplest to set up, the easiest and most convenient to use, at least as of June, year of our Lord, 2025. Let's just jump right into this and set up a two PC setup today. Sound good? And by the way, you may have noticed I'm using a different microphone than I normally do. This is the Fifine AM8, and they're the sponsor of today's video. And this $55 mic has both USB and XLR. So quick question, what have been your thoughts on the mic quality of this video so far? Has it sounded like a $55 mic, or has it sounded like any other mic you'd expect. I've been testing this out for a little bit and I've been pretty impressed so far. It's a dynamic mic also, so you're not gonna be getting any room noise like a room echo or fans from your PC in this thing. I'm currently using this in the XLR setup just because that's the most convenient for me, but that's kind of the great thing is you can choose whichever one you want and they both basically sound the same. It's got a nice RGB ring to it with a little capacitive button that you can tap to change the color. Look at that. Ooh, I like the purple, hold on. There we go. It's got two dials on it, one for the headphone volume, which there's a headphone jack on the back, and the other one for the microphone gain. And then on this side is a capacitive mute button that you can tap to obviously mute your voice. I really like this new trend of putting both USB and XLR on a microphone, because a lot of new streamers need USB for simplicity, but then when you're ready to upgrade to an actual XLR mixer, you don't have to go out and buy a whole new microphone. You can keep using this one and just swap the outputs on it. And one last thing they didn't ask me to talk about is this mic cover the pop filter thing, it's like velvety. It's, it's so soft. So I'm actually using the bundle called the AM8T, which you can get on Amazon for $68. It comes with the microphone arm here, which all in all is a great value for content creators on any kind of budget. So check it out. I will put a link to it in the description down below. So the main difficulty in a two PC setup is sharing information between the two PCs. For example, you have video signals that need to go from the gaming PC to the streaming PC, like your desktop capture, your game capture, and your camera. You have audio signals like sending your game audio, sending your microphone audio, your Discord audio over to your stream PC, and then also sharing information from your stream PC back, like maybe your alert sounds should come back to your headphones. And then also peripherals controlling both PCs. So we're gonna go over all three of those things today. Over on the streaming PC here, you can see I've got OBS, you're looking at my streaming PC, and then what the streaming PC is capturing is my gaming PC. So. Here's a video on a camera I'm watching right now. So I'll let you know which PC I'm working on at any given moment so we can make this as simple as possible. But let's start with the simple one. Let's start with video. And we're talking about capturing your gameplay and your camera on your streaming PC. The simplest way to do this is with a capture card. You probably already know what this is, but if you don't, it's a simple little USB device. You can see the little USB port right there and it has HDMI in and out. I may have pointed to the wrong one in out. No, I got it, we're good. So you're gonna plug this capture card into your streaming PC with the USB port, and then you're gonna go out of the GPU of your gaming PC, specifically the HDMI port, into the HDMI in of the capture card. And then inside OBS here, you're gonna add a source, you're gonna add a video capture device. We're gonna call this gameplay. And then in here, you're gonna choose your capture card. And so now this gameplay source is my gaming PC. Now there's something important you need to do. There's a chance that the capture card is not seeing the same thing as you're seeing on your gaming screen. Let's go into your display settings on your gaming PC. And it's possible that your main monitor and the capture card are seen as two separate monitors. Cause that's basically what happens. Your gaming PC thinks the capture card is just another display. And you need to make sure you're duplicating your desktop, duplicating your display to both your monitor 
and your capture card so it's showing the same thing. That way, whatever you show on your gaming PC, it's also gonna show up in OBS on your streaming PC. One thing you need to do when you're choosing a capture card is make sure your capture card has the same specs as your monitor. If you game in 4K, but your capture card can only do 1080p, once you mirror the displays, you're gonna lower your display down to 1080p. So I'm currently using the Elgato 4K X, but there are a number of 4K capture cards that work just fine. Make sure your resolution and your frame rate is exactly what you wanna game at, and you should be good to go. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this camera and we're gonna add that into OBS as well. Now this is something you should be familiar with, shouldn't need me to teach you, but we're gonna do it anyway. Let's add another video capture device. This is gonna be, we're gonna do the Camlink 4K. And I forgot to turn off the HDMI info. <laughs> so we're gonna get some bars on my screen here, but that's okay. Let's well, just for funsies, we're just gonna throw it over here. We're not making a pretty stream today. We're just going over how it works. That looks good enough. And that's gonna be about it for our video. If you wanna spice this up, add some alerts and stuff, and you don't know how, I've got previous videos on this series called the Streamer Masterclass where we talk about that. But let's jump into the most difficult part of a two PC setup, and that is the audio configuration. Now there's a lot of differing opinions on the best way to do it. A lot of people like to have all their audio sources going into the streaming PC because that allows you to record all the different tracks separately and edit them later. I like all of my audio sources like my Discord, my microphone, my gameplay originating on my gaming PC because that means that if I want to game when I'm not streaming, I don't have to have my streaming PC on. So to me, that's the simplest, most convenient way. But if you want to try that other route of plugging everything into your streaming PC, that link that I mentioned, Nick's resource, it's got everything in there. So over here on the gaming PC, let's start setting everything up. My software mixer of choice is the Elgato Wavelink. I find it to be powerful enough for what I need and simple enough for anyone to use right out of the box. So that's what we're gonna be using. In order to activate Wavelink, you do have to have some kind of Elgato hardware. I'm using the Stream Deck Plus, which activates it, and I can have multiple tracks, which I can mix. But if you don't wanna spend $200 on a Stream Deck and you still want the software, you can also just get the Elgato Wave Neo, their tiny little microphone, it's like 65 bucks. That will also activate it. And you don't even have to use that mic if you don't want to. I know some people that just have it muted and sitting in the corner just so they can activate Wavelink. But this is gonna be where all of our audio sources go into. If you wanna deep dive into the Wavelink software, I've got a separate video for that. That's also in the Streamer Masterclass series. So go check that out. You can see we've got voice chat. That's where Discord's going into. We got system. That's where our gameplay is going into. Spotify is where our music is going into. And this way, again, I can game without my streaming PC turned on and I can still adjust my Discord volume versus my gameplay volume. And then it mixes all together on the gaming PC and I send that final mix over to the streaming PC. How do we get that mix over to the streaming PC to pick up in OBS? Again, there are a lot of different ways to do this. A popular one is using a physical mixer that has a second output. Some streaming mixers actually have two USB ports for plugging into two different PCs, like the Beacon Studio or the Rodecaster. Some mixers have a single USB port that plug into a computer and you can have multiple tracks on there and then a line out where an aux cable can go to the other PC and you can do it that way. Now, Elgato doesn't have either of those, but the truth is, we don't need it because we already have a cable going between the two PCs and it's the HDMI cable. That same HDMI cable that we're sending our video over to the streaming PC, we can use to send the audio. So down here in Stream Mix, I can actually just choose the Elgato 4K X. And you can actually see when I click on my capture card here, look over here at the mixer, all my audio starts to come through. Now you might need to troubleshoot a little bit and adjust some levels. Windows kind of has some weird audio routing going on where it'll be one volume on one PC and another volume on another. So mess with the volume knob on this PC, mess with the volume knob in OBS, and you'll find a good balance there. But already we've made a ton of progress. We've got our gameplay, our camera all captured on here, and we've got all of our important audio being sent to our streaming PC. The last question is, how do we get audio back from the streaming PC to the gaming PC? We don't want to use another whole capture card just for audio. That's kind of insane. There are some more simple and free options to do that. A cheap option is actually just to go out of the line out port on your streaming PC back into the line in port of the motherboard of your gaming PC. You might need to use a little ground loop noise isolator thing if you're getting some excess noise doing that. But for the most part, that can work great. We're gonna do something brand new. It's actually something in beta right now, but it'll be a full release soon. And it's a new system by Elgato called Wavecast. What this allows you to do is send an audio signal over your network. So as long as both PCs are on the same network, which they should be, they're in the same home, you should be able to send one audio signal from one PC 
to another PC. So you'll install Wavecast on both PCs, and I'll put a link to that download down below. And as long as it's running on both PCs, they'll just recognize each other and see, hey, there is another PC running Wavecast on this network, let's connect to it. So you can see on my gaming PC, we've got this PC, and then we've got the remote PC that is my streaming PC over, it's my MSI laptop over there. Now, if you're using this and it's still in beta, you'll have to put in a code. I'll show you, it actually, uh, when you first launch it, it'll look like this. It'll ask you to enter a license key. All you have to do is type in Wavecast Beta 2025, capitalized like, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, or Dustin will put it on the screen. Type that in there, that'll unlock it, and you can use it. I don't know for sure if this is free forever, but I haven't been told anything about a price. So, so far, this is a great option. If you're looking for other options, again, Nick's, Nick's resource down there has got them all. Now, this software allows you to send an audio source from one PC to another in only one direction. So the first thing we need to do is choose that direction, and that's with these arrows here. When I first launched it, it was going from this PC over to the remote PC, but we're already doing that over HDMI. So let's send it back, let's switch it, so now it's coming from the remote PC, my laptop, to this PC. And the neat thing is you can control both PCs from one PC. So I'm gonna send all audio from the remote PC over to the gaming PC. That way if there's any audio, I mean the main thing is just alert sounds that are going on in OBS on my streaming PC. When those happen, they're gonna be sent over and I get to choose where that goes to. Now I'm gonna make another channel inside my mixer that is just my streaming audio so I can control that volume separately. So I'm gonna add aux1. Let's rename that stream PC. Aux1 and 2 are just kind of extra audio tracks that you can do whatever you want with. And we're gonna check Elgato Wavecast there. Now up here, you can see it's going into system. And if I play something over on the streaming PC, like maybe some copyright free stream beats music, huh? Here's our, here's our chiptune selection. You can see it's coming through the system. It's not coming through stream PC. Sorry if a little bit of this was covered by my camera this whole time. I keep forgetting that we're <laughs> capturing it in OBS. Now, if I want this to go into my streaming PC, I need to change this audio output to be this track. You can see I got system, I've got voice chat, I've got Spotify. Stream PC is not in here. I'm guessing this is a bug because this is in beta, uh, but now that I've added this extra input here, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to quit Wavecast out of the dock down here and relaunch it. And now, you can see Stream PC shows up. So I'm hoping they'll change that. Let's let's change this back to all audio here. And now, if I open up Spotify on the streaming PC, you can see it's coming through the Stream PC input here, and I have complete control over the volume of my Stream PC separately. So far, this has been pretty easy. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Five, six years ago when dual PC streaming started, this used to be way harder. So I'm grateful for all these companies making these solutions for two PC setups and audio routing made easy. Now the last step is controlling both PCs at the same time. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. There are things called KVMs, for example, that allow you to use one mouse and one keyboard on two separate PCs. You can either have a physical KVM, which is a button that'll switch it back and forth, or even a software one where if you move your cursor off of the screen of one PC, it just moves right over to the other PC seamlessly. Very cool, all those options will be down below. For me, I had a second mouse sitting in the other room, my previous mouse, and so I like to use a second mouse for the second PC. It's just, for me, I don't have to worry about my mouse accidentally switching to the other PC. I like to just grab this one when I wanna use it, and then I actually use one of those button switcher KVMs for my keyboard. That is by no means the best option, but it is absolutely a working option. And then of course, if you want to have something like a Stream Deck on the second PC, there are a lot of options for that too. You can either just buy a dedicated Stream Deck for your other PC. There are also virtual Stream Decks that you can set up. There's a pedal that you can use for your second PC for switching scenes. But now you have a working two PC setup with video and audio going back and forth, control of your Stream PC audio using a software mixer and your gaming PC. And if you decide you want to have a gaming night off stream, your second PC doesn't have to be on for your main PC to work and have all of its functionality. Very cool, very swag. I like it. Anyway, guys, if this has helped, make sure you hit the like button down below and uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or there's also an awesome Discord with a ton of smart people that can answer questions. That will be linked down below as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy streaming. Peace.